Hello and welcome with me is Dr. David Albert. He's the medical uh, uh, officer at the uh, at Alive Corps. Dr. Albert, first of all, thank you so much for sparing time for CNBC TV. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. At the outset, wanted to understand from you uh, what really went behind when you looked at bringing in something like a Cardia Mobile, which is, uh, you know, the ECG literally at fingertips. Well, uh, you know, obviously heart disease is a huge issue in India, just as it is around the world, but especially in India. And so we saw the opportunity. You also have a, a country like the United States that has urban centers where the medical care is, is focused, yet have huge populations in rural areas. And so to bring 21st century care to everyone everywhere requires us to take advantage of technology that now is ubiquitous, the smartphone, wireless communication, uh, low energy Bluetooth. And so that's what Alive Course has brought to India in the form of our Cardia Mobile and Cardia Mobile 6 lead. Uh, you know, help us understand how this mobile device works, uh, what are its features and how well can it, in, it fit into uh, a setting like that of India, which is partly urban, but in large parts, semi-rural, uh, semi-urban and rural. Yeah, the easiest way for me to do this is to demonstrate to you uh, our system, which I can do here uh, during the interview, if you'd like me to. Sure, sure, please go ahead. Here's going, okay, good. So now what this is, this is, this is, this is promising. So here is, do you see, hello, David, Cardia, do you see that? Yep. Okay, well, I'm going to start. I just go up and record your ECG, and I will hold the device in my hands and put it against my left leg. And what you will see is my electrocardiogram, six leads. This is half of the EKG you would get in an Indian hospital, what we call a 12-lead ECG. And so very quickly, I'm able to demonstrate and this data then is directly sent to a cardiologist in one of your hospitals, to uh, a primary care doctor if you have one, and there's the information that can be shared. Now I'm gonna come off the share here. And so this was yes. the device yeah. I used. It's a very small device, pocket size, fits in my pocket, that works with your Android phone or your iPhone if you have one, to enable oh a patient anywhere, anywhere they have cellular coverage, anywhere they have Wi-Fi to transmit their heart's electrical activity, their EKG to a cardiologist, to a hospital, and potentially notify them of something important that needs to be acted upon. And so that's the technology that AliveCore is bringing to India today, and, and that we actually have in now 37 countries and, uh, you know, we're pleased to say India is the largest country we've entered. Uh, Dr. Albert, just explain what's the technology behind this uh, device? Well, this device is obviously microelectronics. It has two electrodes on one side and one on the other that you put down on your leg. But it uses low energy Bluetooth to talk to the Android phone or the iPhone or the tablet. And from there is transmitted to the cloud and to... Uh, the hospital or the, or the physician for review. We also have some very sophisticated artificial intelligence operating on that Android phone, on that tablet, that can analyze the electrocardiogram and give information directly to the patient that may say, hey, you need to seek care immediately. My question is around the uh, regulations on healthcare data. Uh, around the world, we've seen this become a concern for many countries, and many uh, uh, governments are looking at regulating it at various levels, including India, where we are now, uh, as we move towards the National Digital Health Mission, which our government has launched in India, uh, we're also talking very categorically about healthcare data and the regulation that we would need to bring in. Now, considering the mobile devices capture so much data, there is artificial intelligence, uh, and, and the data would be stored there as well. How do you look at the regulation, regulatory framework across the world? Well, we take privacy very seriously, 
And obviously, when we enter a new market, we began in the United States, which has the Food and Drug Administration, and we have a law called HIPAA that governs healthcare information privacy. And when we went to Europe, which was our second market, we entered, they have a new regulations called GDPR, General Data Privacy Regulations. And, and each country, whether it's France, Germany, the UK, have their own regulations. So I can tell you, we go into every country, we are very cognizant of their regulations, and we make sure that we keep the highest levels of data security and privacy uh, in terms of, of data security, uh, encryption, et cetera, because we have to. Uh, you know, we're a, we're a healthcare device that's used by literally hundreds of thousands of people every day around the globe, and we see that growing to millions of people, and we need to make sure that we keep their trust by keeping their data, data private and also following all the local regulations. And so it's, a, it's always a challenge because the regulations are not the same around the world. And so, you know, we go into a place like India, We've opened an office in India, an office in Bangalore, in order to, to have feet on the street who can give us that, that in-country expertise that you need to be able to deal with the local regulations. Um, in your assessment, what, what has been the kind of impact the lockdown has had? And um, uh, do you think these mobile devices have been able to make a difference there? That everyone saw uh, a decrease in patients coming in, including those who are having strokes and heart attacks. To, to, uh, with bad outcomes because they were scared. They were scared that, that, that the pandemic, that the COVID would, would hurt them more than their heart attack. And so there's been some education. But in the meantime, telemedicine has, has basically been advanced by a number of years around the world and filled in the gap that, that existed when people didn't feel safe and there were lockdowns. And our business, it's one of the reasons we accelerated our entry into India, because we saw that you all are suffering, as the United States has, with COVID and, that, and the lockdowns and the restrictions uh, to medical services. And, and so we see that virtual care, telecare, what we call digital health, are helping to fill the gap. How do you see the, uh, the entire industry of uh, these mobile diagnostic devices uh, bring in machine learning, bring in artificial intelligence. Where do you see this uh, this industry progress from here on? And what are the other uh, uh, you know uh, innovations that we uh, uh, could be seeing as far as cardiac care is concerned? Let's say to start. Well, with. artificial intelligence, machine learning will play a major role in. And I, I, you know, people call AI artificial intelligence. I call it augmented intelligence. It's going to help the doctors and the nurses see more patients, be more efficient. It's going to help mm -hmm. them. You know, some people say, well, it's going to replace them, like uh, replace, you know, uh, self-driving cars replacing taxi cabs. I don't believe that. I believe AI and machine learning and healthcare will simply allow us to put intelligence, first of all, at the edge, in your phone, mm -hmm. in that mobile device, and allow both the doctors and the patients to be better informed, have prediction. And in prediction in medicine is prevention. Prevent that bad outcome. Tell that patient, mm. it's time to go to the emergency room. It's time to go to the hospital. This is serious. And so I see AI will be that doctor in your pocket telling you when you need to seek additional care. And so I'm very bullish on, on the prospects for AI and machine learning. And I think it will just enhance our ability to deliver good care anywhere to anyone. Right, you know, while there are, uh, uh, you know, a great set of opportunities, uh, what in your sense are some of the challenges that still needs to be ironed out um, in the larger global scheme of things, when we look at AI machine learning progressing the way forward uh, when it comes to diagnosis, uh, and especially with the perspective of a country like India? Well, it, anything that's introduced into medicine needs to be rigorously tested. You know, mm. we, we talk about clinical trials and validation. Um, you know, in a lot of areas you can introduce, you know, the, the, the notion is we'll introduce a beta and we'll see how, you know, we'll get a lot of feedback. Well, we can't do that in medicine because people's lives are at stake. And so we need to rigorously test 
all the new oh. AI and machine learning innovations and make sure they deliver on their promise. And that's unique, oh. uh, but not unique to India. It's the same around the world. The Indian government's, uh, uh, you know, aim of the national digital health mission that we are the, that we've set out for. Uh, obviously, it'll take some time, but uh, how do you think uh, Alive Core could fit into that program? And uh, you know, if you're looking at it closely, well, we are, and uh, as, as I said, we're talking to a number of healthcare organizations, hospitals, hospital groups, the government. Uh, I, as, as I said, when I was in Chennai, I visited a number of hospitals, went up to their coronary intensive care units, talked to their car leading cardiologists, and they all have the same thing. We all want healthcare data to be shared, to be secure, and to be augmented. And I think that's where a live core can come in. We have expertise not only in mobile care, not only in cardiac electrocardiology, but we have expertise in machine learning and AI. And, oh. and I think we're gonna bring that. I mean, we've recorded over 85 million EKGs uh, it, through a live core devices. We've sold over a million devices in the history of the company. And, and that expertise in dealing with that scale of data will certainly be valuable in a country the size of India. Just to understand, um, you know, the, the kind of use this, this sort of mobile device has during a time like pandemic, did you all do any assessments to say that in the last nine months versus last year, these many, um, uh, there was an increase that you saw in terms of uh, this mobile device being used to do ECGs um, or any other data in terms of, um, you know, explaining um, and, and what is your anticipation for a market like India, let's say in the next one year or two years, what is it that you want to achieve? Well, first of all, uh, we, we've had dramatic growth secondary, obviously, to the pandemic as, as mobile health and telehealth uh, came to the forefront in order to deliver health when people couldn't go to hospitals, couldn't go to clinics. And so mm. we've, we've, we've benefited from that push to telemedicine. Uh, you know, we think that there's a great opportunity beyond the pandemic in India because yeah. of the structure of your country. You have large rural mm. populations. And again, it's easier to move the data than it is to move a patient, to move a person, to have them come for a test, have them come for a, an EKG. And so we think there's a huge opportunity. I can't tell you we have a number, uh, but you know uh, the future is always cloudy until you get there. But, but we have great expectations that India will be a, an excellent market for our products and, and services, and that we'll find uh, you know, great reception among not only the patients, but among the doctors in the hospitals. For now, Dr. Albert, thank you so much for taking us through the plans of the company and this very interesting device. Thank you very much for the opportunity.